Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. So this is uh, the TDM uh, community meeting. So now we are doing uh, it uh, each week. Uh, this uh, kind of a gathering of people who participate in the TDM community. So this um, meeting relies mostly on, on having an agenda proposed by uh, the community. So um, I guess a couple uh, reminders from, from, from our side is that uh, we are always looking for volunteers to uh, propose new topics uh, like today's topics uh, that will be collage uh, presented and uh, the discussion will be organized uh, by Mark. Uh, and the second uh, thing is that uh, we are also trying to uh, have some more uh, people hosting these meetings like I am today and like Andrew was doing last week. So to guarantee the, the continuity of the session, we are always looking for uh, people that want to host one and uh, collaborating this aspect of the community as well. So um, basically you can, you can get uh, in touch with us either on the uh, discuss forum, you can just post there uh, or you can uh, contact us directly uh, on the Discord, for example, if you want to either present or uh, host one of these sessions. Now, to start on the, on the uh, announcements, con community announcements for today, uh, I'm very happy uh, to welcome uh, Gustavo Romero and also Merdad Hessar as new committers for the project. So basically a recognition on, of your kind of a great effort in pushing PRs and reviewing code and uh, being active in the discussions on the forum and in all the sort of uh, channels that we have for uh, this community. So yeah, uh, congratulations both. Um, and I guess this is mostly what I have as an introduction. Uh, again, we are recording this session, so it will be available after the meeting in case uh, you want to um, refer this to, to someone and share the video as well so that people can uh, see, I mean, the great discussions and things we, we host here every week. Uh, and with that, I guess I can hand over to Mark Schultz, who's going to present the uh, main agenda topic for today, which is the uh, collage um, new uh, contribution that was re recently merged into the code base. Yeah, over to you, Mark. Thanks, Lander. Um, uh, how long do we want to, uh, is there any other business or is this kind of the remainder of the meeting? Just want to make sure we I guess go, that's, go, the, go. that's the main topic for today. Okay. All uh, right. I, and uh, so do you want people to interrupt you or do you want people to? Yeah, look, we're a pretty small crowd. So um, why don't folks just interrupt? Um, yeah, okay. And if you just want to chime in on audio, I, I think the troubled uh, posting questions in chat is good, but it tends to encourage like a large questions that aren't necessarily in sync with the presentation and it makes it a little harder. So since we're a small crowd, why don't we just take yep. it? Okay. Nice and cool. okay, I'll do the uh, screen share thing. Bear with me. Uh-oh. Oh, I think, uh, I think you need to stop sharing. There you go. Let's see if it works. This is a new machine. So forgive me if there's shenanigans I have to go through. How's that? Yeah. Sent. Slideshow. All right. Yeah. So as Leandro mentioned, um, this went in, um, when was it last week? Um, I really, uh, with this RFC, I really want to try to be more, you know, this isn't like, you know, written in stone tablets and the RFC is fixed and everything from here on is fully determined. I do want to be able to go back around this RFC and kind of revise it as we learn more. Parts of this project are quite speculative, as you'll see. Um, and I think as we get deeper into actually checking stuff into main, I'm pretty sure we'll want to go back and revise. And ultimately, I would like to make this um, uh, kind of, you know, an as-built and as-implemented um, record of, of what we did. 
uh, and it's already out of date just based on my own prototype. Anyway, so um, I'm, I've been mostly uh, chipping away at this. Um, uh, Michalis Papadimitriou, uh, who's actually in this session, thanks for, which is actually a good time for him. He's in, he's in Greece, he's been uh, working on this. Um, Matthew Barrett is a new OctoML employee. Uh, he's uh, just started with us. And uh, Sung Park is one of the, we're very lucky to have him here at OctoML. He's one of the authors on the uh, preprint, which I'll mention later. Uh, mo but uh, most of the problems you can blame on me. Uh, so what, what's the basic idea here? Well, you know, let's, let's, let's start with MNIST. I took out one layer because once you've seen one layer, you've seen them all. Um, and so the idea here is that we're, we're wanting to kind of find an optimal partitioning um, for your overall model graph. And that is basically, um, you know, we have all of these available backends. One of the very unique features about TVM is its, uh, you know, uh, ability to support bring your own compiler plugins. And those plugins can work at very different levels of abstraction. Some of them like TensorRT almost want to be whole model compilers. Others like the TVM backend itself is, is all about um, good scheduling for kernels. Um, Cutlass is kind of uh, more of a library with its own tuning uh, infrastructure. And then we have more kind of library based things. So uh, we really wanna make sure that uh, we bring kind of the sense of, of tuning or optimality to this mix and matching of all of these BYOC um, plugins and TVM's own lowering machinery um, uh, in the same way that TVM itself does tuning for schedules. Uh, and so basically we, we wanna go from that to something like this. I'm just making this up, don't take this as representative. Uh, and this particular partitioning has decided that um, um, TensorRT does a particularly good job with fused, our old friend Conf2D add Relu. Um, uh, the, the dance or the matmol transpose down the bottom uh, turns out to be uh, most efficient on uh, Kublas and TVM is left behind to kind of both fill in the kernels that are remaining. So in this case, it's a pad, uh, a max pull and a reshape. Um, but also I won't really get into this. It's talked a little bit, bit in the RFC. Um, uh, it's also responsible for all the additional glue. So remember at the end of the day, uh, um, you know, the VM or the graph executor is responsible for all the plumbing. And some of that can be include like, you know, actually pushing constants in and so on. And so part of the partitioning decision is also to decide that, yeah, these particular expressions, constants, whatever, don't need to be fused into any particular kernel. They are just executed by the VM itself. Um, so in, a, in effect, there's kind of a residual host um, um, partition in this world as well. Okay, and um, uh, obviously, you know, the whole point of this is so that uh, overall end-to-end -end model agency is reduced compared to if you kind of followed an eager um, strategy, which would be just using TVM or just using partition for tensor RT, or even carefully constructing some chain of, you know, partition for tensor RT, then partition for couple, then partition for something else um, to try and, you know, see if you can kind of find that, you know, th that optimality. Instead, we simply fall back on, on using measurement to guide this optimal selection strategy. So, and that's, that's honestly about it um, in terms of, um, the setup and everything that follows from this is all engineering. So uh, let me get into that. So obviously this is um, based on a preprint. Um, I just, you know, just to declare, um, I'm not trying to do research here. I really want this to be an engineering project. So I'm taking my job as, you know, basically picking up the research that's already been done and kind of getting that into main in a, in a sustainable and reusable way. So um, I'm sure there's going to be lots of oh, we could do this and we could do that. And have you seen this paper and so on? I am deliberately kind of putting a little bit of a wall around us so that we don't get drawn into that because uh, I do want this to kind of be, uh, you know, very much an engineering project. Anyway, so uh, that's the preprint. Um, uh, I am not going to talk about any, I'm not going to present any graphs and so on. This isn't an MLSIS conference talk or anything. Uh, I defer all of the... Um, performance questions to the paper. Now, obviously here at OctoML, we have extensive infrastructure for doing performance comparisons and sweeps across all sorts of models. Um, a lot of those models aren't even public. They're actual models that our customers have given to us. So obviously internally, we are 
paying very close attention to that, but we're still in the process of building that infrastructure. We're trying to connect what we're doing here into the, that existing infrastructure. And so that's why I don't want to start to throw bar charts at you or, or anything like that, because I'm still not confident myself. Nevertheless, the paper shows uh, that indeed you can do better if you kind of use actual empirical measurements and you are prepared to be very flexible in mixing and matching between the different backends. The paper de does demonstrate that you can do better beyond simply, you know, partition for tensor RT and letting TVM do the rest, things like that. Um, just for those who happen to be familiar with the paper, um, if you're not, just ignore what I'm about to say. So this, the RFC is basically the, the preprint. Uh, we've taken away the evolution research aspect from the paper. Um, I know uh, uh, ML Sys folks love evolution research. It's a, it's a great way to do all sorts of fun things. We're, we're just sticking to um, basic um, dynamic programming approach for now. Uh, we also have, um, we were quite worried in looking at how to bring the paper into Maine in a sustainable way. We were quite worried that the, the paper's prototype implementation relied on a whole new um, library of, uh, if you like, fusion patterns or BYOC patterns with its own fusion engine and so on. And we were quite concerned that we'd kind of end up with, um, you know, a, a non-scalable process, namely that every time one of our OctoML's customers came to us with a new model and a new target, we'd have to go, oh, wait, okay, well, this BYOC has these patterns, but now we have to replicate you know all of that all of that logic up in the collage level we just felt that that wasn't sustainable so one of the big things um we've tried to do in this uh this kind of version the rfc version is to make sure that we directly piggyback on byoc you know uh, and ideally with no changes to the existing byoc machinery not the least because a lot of byoc plugins are out of tree um, uh, we also the paper also kind of introduced a new notion that's orthogonal to targets and devices called backends. Um, we have taken that notion and folded it back into targets, which you'll see later. And uh, the thing that we have added is we've kind of lent very heavily into this new notion of a partition specification, um, which is kind of has its own little, it's like a, it, it's a little bit like DF patterns. In fact, it builds on top of DF patterns, but it's its own library of base and combinator rules that when you combine them in different ways, you can express different partitioning strategies. And that flexibility means that we can uh, make the overall search much more efficient. Um, and we can also, without getting drawn into endless patterns and so on, we can tune uh, the search for the different BYOC targets. Uh, I'm not really gonna get into that except for um, one slide, we can talk about that if, if you want to. Uh, everyone is, of course, welcome to take a look at the tree. Uh, we are just starting to um, peel things off the tree and start to push through to Maine now that the RFC is kind of in place. Um, I expect it'll take us uh, a month or two to kind of chip away. Um, all, all comments are welcome. If during um, the PR review, we realize, you yeah, know, we didn't quite get this right, very happy to backtrack to the RFC and we, you know, we, we follow through. Um, uh, and just if you did want to actually try out the the tree, I should warn you, I'm, you know, not keeping it in, uh, it, 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 it goes into experimental dead ends. Um, so, you know, look at the code, but please don't assume it's actually going to work for you. Um, however, uh, I don't think I cover this elsewhere, but um, uh, I am, you know, obviously we, we started out with good old MNIST just to get off the ground, um, get the get the basics working. Uh, we've moved on to GPT-2 just because it's, well, it's about 1300 nodes and uh, it's a good way to kind of tease out where you've accidentally got it, you know, a super linear dependency on N and you're, you're fooling yourself. So it is chugging away on GPT-2. Um, and, uh, but I, again, I'm not going to talk about actual performance improvements for that. Okay. Um, so from the outside, uh, we've tried to make it, um, kind of as, um, uh, innocuous as possible. So, uh, 
First thing is it's opt in. So if uh, nothing will change other than the, the few, you know, passes here and there that we've had to kind of robustify, but nothing is going to change on the mainline path if you don't opt in. So all of the existing BYOC um, calls uh, will still work um, and you'll be running the same passes. It'll still be running TVMs built in, fuse ops, all of that stuff. Um, if you do opt in um, and uh, let's see, uh, so here's the, oh, whoops, sorry. I can't highlight text. Uh, so the relay.collage.enable collage, true. That's what kind of, you know, switches you into the light fantastic. Uh, in your in your past context. Um, so that's kind of first point of customization. The second point is in order to express to the collage machinery what you know what it should be considering exploring, I've piggybacked on targets and introduced a notion of target refinement. And so here I'm I'm building up a bunch of targets. And some of these targets are just plain old CUDA targets. However, they've introduced an additional um, attribute compiler, which corresponds to the BYOC compiler name. And then I just throw all of those targets together and pass them in. And so this is piggybacking on the existing heterogeneous target support machinery. Um, there's a few changes I have to make because now this is, a, this is a, a list, not a dictionary, but they're all actually um, pretty minor. Uh, and uh, Thanks to uh, Matthew, you can now also have compiler QDNN and compiler Kublas. Okay, and with that, uh, that will trigger a new collage um, partitioner pass, which, um, this is another difference with the paper, uh, is run very early. It's In fact, it's run um, as soon as we can get away with. Um, and the reason for that is, um, this partitioner pass is going to be kind of, it's, you know, reaching in and looking at all the BYOC patterns and so on in order to decide what all the valid partitionings are. And we want to make sure that those BYOC patterns see the same graphs that they currently do with the uh, existing partition for toolchain convention. And that convention is obviously you do your partitioning before you enter the main TVM build. And so that's forced us to put the collage partitioner way up front. Um, in the RFC, I kind of tie myself in knots trying to <laughs> explain all of the complexities with the fact that we want to do this pass early, but there's a lot of pressure to also do it quite late, kind of where TVM fuse ops is. Uh, I, at the end of the day, I think we've made the right decision and we've just moved it to be as early as possible. Um, note that the paper, however, um, uh, does its work actually inside as a hook inside the existing fuse ops. So that, that's another difference with or how the paper approaches. this. Okay, and then, um, so the partitioner does its thing, goes off, does search, does tuning, does all that stuff. Um, its output is actually no different from the um, output that you currently get using all of the existing machinery. It's encoded all of its decisions in exactly the same way that they're currently encoded using primitive functions with compiler attributes. The bodies of those functions may have composite functions. It's, it's all exactly the same. There's no like core AST changes or represent change, representation changes or anything like that. Um, part of the work we've had to do to make all of this seamless is to make sure that you can take any of um, uh, any kind of Basically, we've had to make sure that the compiler, if you simply take a module that's already been kind of rewritten to use these primitives and so on in any form you want, and you just pass that through TVM, you get exactly what you expressed. That's not quite the case at the moment. There's a few little glitches, but we, we've fixed those. Okay, and, um, and so, yeah, after um, Collage has done its thing, we just let compilation proceed. There's no downstream changes. And all of the existing um, lowering dispatch and uh, unification, you know, unioning of runtime modules and all of the existing machinery that supports BYOC and gets you to a final single, you know, runtime module, that's all unchanged. And it just, we just let it do its thing. Okay, so that's, that's kind of on the outside. On the inside, I kind of didn't want to go, um, 
too deep. So I'm, <laughs> I, th I thought I'd stay more on the, you know, light and fluffy side and we can just chat about anything that takes people's interest. Um, I should mention, uh, I'm working on some additional things uh, which are not in the RFC. And um, uh, so I, I need to go back and put some more explanatory text in there. But anyway, let's just kind of skirt along at the surface, see how we do. Um, so, you know, on the inside, what does this mysterious collage practitioner pass do? Well, you know, naively, you can just kind of try them all. Um, and, you know, given the no expense spared approach we have to uh, tuning, you know, maybe, you know, it's not completely outrageous that we would actually, uh, you know, almost brute force our way through. But thankfully, we don't need to do that. And so we can bring this back into the realms of, of practicality. Um, certainly, as soon as you start dealing with N factorial, you know, because of complexity class, you have to tread very, very carefully. Um, so there's basically two main assumptions. Um, uh, the, the first is that we can kind of rely on the existing BOAOC patterns, along with some very simple kind of fusion styles in order to um, kind of get what I've been calling ideal partitions. And we can kind of recover those ideal partitions kind of independently. So each, each potential backend can recover its notion of ideal partitions independently of all the others. And uh, uh, we can proceed from there. And so what is, what's an ideal partition? Maybe I'm getting a little too, um, you know, hung up on notation here, but so the idea is that an ideal partition, it's kind of like a Goldilocks partition. It's not too large and it's not too small, right? Um, so we want it to be as large as possible because uh, let's say, you know, the part, let's say the, we, on the one hand, we have a partition uh, conf2d add, and another we have the partitions conf2d and add separately. Well, obviously, um, if we don't explore the, the, the partition that has both of those operations, we're missing out on you know, the fusion opportunities and other optimizations, which is the whole point of, of, of this work. And so we want to make sure that when we're dealing with ideal partitions, they're kind of large so that we get lots of opportunities for the various BYOC backends to kind of, you know, flex their muscles and, and trigger all the fusion and optimization that they want. But on the other, other hand, we don't want them to too big. I mean, uh, because then uh, we're kind of, you know, stuck having to explore this huge space. So we, so we, we don't, we want them, we don't, we don't want them so large that if we split them, you would get much the same execution time as if you, you know, measured them together. Um, so in other words, let's say we've got, uh, two conf2ds for, for, for argument's sake in, in succession. Um, we could say, oh, well, obviously the ideal partition is conf2d, conf2d, um, but uh, the execution of time of that for a particular BOIOC uh, target is probably the same as just having two partitions, conf2d, conf2d, and adding their execution times. And that's because by unioning those things, we're not kind of opening up any more optimization possibilities. Um, so basically, uh, with a um, by being careful um, with these rules, we can make sure that the starting point for the search um, is kind of primed from partitions that are kind of sensible. Um, that's kind of the, the hand wavy way of saying it. Um, and then the second simplifying assumption, and this one is, um, is you know, more suspect and is why the paper uh, explored using evolutionary search. Um, so we're assuming that when we have two partitions that we're exploring, that um, their costs are additive. And so basically, given two partitions, the search is assuming that the cost of running A and B, um, you know, uh, as a single run is the same as the cost of running A and the same across the cost of running B in isolation. And uh, plus a small penalty to account for the fact that, yeah, you had to launch a kernel or make some other, um, you know, there's some overhead to do with, to, to do with that call. Um, and that assumption is patently false. I mean, we have cache effects and all sorts of other things that mean costs aren't additive, but nevertheless, it's a simplifying assumption, which means that we can now just use a, a classical dynamic programming approach to, to doing this search. Um, and in fact, the RFC uh, uses uh, Dijkstra just because I'm trying to make, I'm, tr I'm hoping that we don't have to explore the whole space that we can Kind of you know once once you get to a particular point in the search space and you realize there's a very expensive option well 
you don't need to waste time, you know, branching out from there. In other words, to use the, uh, the, the classic um, shortest path terminology, um, I'm hoping that the graph has a low bloom factor and that you can kind of fairly quickly kind of just find your, your shortest path. Uh, and I think from here on, I have some pictures because I spent all this time drawing them for the RFC and figured, well, if I spent all that time, we might as well, <laughs> we might as well look at them. Um, so, uh, uh, so on the inside, uh, obviously, um, uh, we are going to be doing lots and lots of work with subgraphs. This is kind of our core data type. And so uh, from the paper did it this way, and I thought it was a very nice idea. So basically you assign a post DFS index to every node, which is already done as part of the, the, the uh, uh, index graph machinery that's already inside TVM, which is part of the DF pattern machinery. So we assign a unique ID uh, to, to every node. Um, uh, and, uh, now, and now we can build a very efficient representation for subgraphs. So we're, we're going to be, you know, we're, we're going to have many, you know, thousands uh, like I think GPT-2, we end up with about 4,000 kicking around. Um, and so we can just represent them very efficiently as, as uh, bit vectors. Um, and then uh, there's also this whole machinery for, for partition rules, which I mentioned early on. Um, so the idea there is that um, it's actually a two-step process. So when collage begins, it looks at the targets and looks at for the compiler annotations uh, attributes in those targets. And from there it goes off and looks at the BYC plugins and, and it basically from that information imports it and builds its own representation for partition rules. And then those partition rules can be, if you like executed on a uh, data flow graph in order to yield a set of candidate partitions. And a candidate partition is a subgraph and the target that you're, you're wanting that subgraph to be compiled for. And so uh, this slide is just showing you that we kind of actually compose those patterns in order to affect the, the kind of uh, rules that we're looking for. In this case, it's looking like it's a, a it's kind of more like a cutlass style integration where it's now building up a whole set of possible uh, um, uh, partitions um, uh, based on uh, DF patterns that are kind of pulling out the primitives and additional uh, fusion combining rules that kind of combine those patterns to yield the ideal partitions. And uh, oops. And so uh, once we've done that, now we move into actually doing the search and the search is done on an implicit search graph. We don't actually materialize the whole graph. That's, that's not necessary. Um, so the the, a node in this search graph is actually the bit vector representing all of the nodes in the model that you've already accounted for. Um, uh, and so basically what we're saying is every path into a particular node in the search graph has by some combination of, um, um, candidate, uh, of partitions has, if you like, covered all of these nodes. So we've, we've already decided that, that somehow we know what to do with this subset of the model. And now the question is, what do we do with the rest? And so the, the uh, edges out of these um, search nodes are all the possible candidate partitions which can slot in at that point without uh, uh, intersecting anything that we've already accounted for. Um, and uh, obviously you don't want to waste time kind of, you know, if you, if you apply one partition rule and then another partition rule, well, that's the same as applying them the other way around. So there's there's tricks in there to make sure that you don't waste time searching, uh, you know, possible rewrites that are obviously commutative. And Mark, so a short, short, short question. Yeah. yeah. So when you refer here to on TVM, so are these the regular Topi operators? Uh, everything I've written here, yes, these are just regular relay operators. The relay operators, and, okay. And the and the on is just referring to the the target in my abbreviated form. Okay. And uh, where I've put star, I just mean, um, it's just my notation for saying 
uh, I'm rewriting just this subgraph and the star, whatever, whatever is inside the star is not part of the subgraph. Um, internally, it's not represented as these expressions, it's represented with these uh, um, bit vectors. Okay, thanks. Right, and so um, just using uh, classic Dijkstra, you basically just uh, lazily explore uh, this search graph. You start with the starting state has no covered nodes. Uh, the ending state has every node accounted for. Uh, at every node, you simply enumerate all of the, the candidate partitions that can slot in there without violating any of the rules. And uh, you keep track of the cumulative costs for the best path. And uh, with any luck, if there's a low bloom in your, uh, in your search, uh, you'll kind of, the search will narrow down and find a path to the finished state um, without it having to explore the whole space. And in the auto tuning case, you would do auto tuning for each path from beginning to end. We are actually doing, uh, that's an excellent question. We're actually doing auto tuning uh, or currently just auto TVM on the fly. And so, uh, and that's, you know, this, this is where I'm a little worried because um, uh, for auto TVM, it's not too bad, um, but uh, for uh, the newer meta schedule machinery, every candidate TVM kernel will be treated as its own, um, you know, tuning task. And so we are going to be exploring a lot more of those than TVM would just left to its own devices because TVM's fuse ops is always eager. Whereas in this world, we have many more possible, um, you know, candidate kernels to, to try and tune for. But yes, currently, Currently, I, I haven't made any phase distinction here. When you, as collage is searching, it may find a particular candidate. It may ask, need to know, well, what's the cost for this candidate? That may trigger tuning, which will then finally return the cost of the best schedule. Mark, uh, on that point, uh, will that be still covered by the cash? mechanism in the cost estimator, assuming that you know, in a subsequent uh, search in the collage and if he decides to tune the same operator. Yes, Ab right. absolutely, yes. So uh, all of the estimate, the cost estimator is obviously backed by a cache. Um, uh, here at OctoML, uh, we have a cache that has visibility across all of the models um, and all of the targets and so one would hope that we get a good hit rate on that um, but even taking that aside certainly when you're tuning um, you know a lot of these deep models you, you'll just see the same candidates over and over again and rather than trying to kind of account for that by some tricky graph rewriting exploiting sharing or something I just rely on the cache to to um, just um, yeah, cache that and by, by cache, do you mean something that you have created yourself or like an online service or uh, some sort of tuning log somewhere on GitHub? Right. So um, there's an abstract cost estimator interface, uh, which uh, basically given an IR module gives you a double. That's pretty much it. Well, an, an IR module and a target. Um, that in the prototype, there's only one instantiation of that interface and it just runs using the, the public TVM local runners and, and uh, it actually bottoms out into the standard um, benchmarking uh, machinery that's in Python. Um, internally to OctoML, we will have different instantiations of that interface that redirect off into our infrastructure. Um, and in practice, my, my plan was to simply pass the cost estimator as an argument to the main machinery so that folks can, you know, uh, adjust that as they need to. Um, the caching in the prototype, which I will probably make the kind of default, I'll have to clean it up a bit because currently it's all a little bit too hard coded, but um, the caching in the prototype works by just a naive in-memory cache 
coupled with a little bit of hackery that I've done to use the standard auto TVM tuning records as a cache as well. So I've had to kind of, you know, put a poor man's caching layer in front of the auto TVM tuning machinery. The net result is um, if you, I could check in a kind of a cached, uh, I could check in a representation for the auto TVM tuning for a bunch of examples. Um, uh, but I'm thinking not to try and check in a cache for uh, any of the collage candidate partitions, because honestly, it's pretty cheap to measure those. The, the most expensive thing in the collage search is the TVM tuning, not the kind of let me compile and evaluate how quick this is for um, cutlass and things like that. That's all pretty quick. Mark, uh, I have another question. Uh, so after the after the candidate partitioning is searched, probably let's say we end up with a better partitioning, will collage or will this work consider merging any compiled region if that was an original desire of that target? Could you repeat the last part again? Sorry. So so when 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 you find a better partitioning in the graph and let's say it involves certain BYOC target that originally had the desire to merge the compiler regions. Um, so after the search is concluded, we uh, will right. those be merged. Yes, there is, uh, there is actually a cleanup pass that um, merges adjacent. So, it, so even though during search, I only looked at little, you know, what I started calling ideal partitions, if you end up finding, oh yeah, collage, 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 TVM particularly, long stretches of TVM, little candidate kernels, yeah, they all, they all get kind of joined together. So it's a, it's a little bit like what um, Merge Compiler Regions already does. All right, all right, cool. Yeah, and you know, based on the, the simplifying assumptions, doing so should be neither here nor there. It might save a little bit of, uh, you know, might save a bit of tr kernel transition time. Those are supposed to be pretty small, but it shouldn't. If if by doing that suddenly, whoa, wait a minute, everything's dramatically faster. Well, that means collage probably should have been searching on larger candidates to begin with. Um, okay, and I think I'm not sure I have any more slides. Do I? Oh yeah, most important slide. Um, yeah, so so let me kind of just um, you know, put some put some disclaimers just so that there's no disappointment. Um, so yeah, as I said, you know, we we have to be careful in only looking at fairly smallish subgraphs. I think currently I'm like n equals four. Maybe we can push it to n equals six or something. Um, so if there is a particular BYC, you know, in um, back end that you know has the world's most fantastic optimization that only kicks in when you've kind of got this 20 deep uh, candidate, well, we might never explore that. And, and which means that the user may have been better off just running partition for that um, candidate, uh, that tool chain in the first place. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, I'm still hopeful that that won't be a problem, but uh, the proof is in the the measurements. Um, lots of people um, bring up very legitimately, well, wait a minute, but um, you know, my particular BYOC needs this particular layout, or it's only running on this particular device. Um, so can you, um, since you're already searching over partitions, can you extend that search to also be in terms of like device placement or layout or memory scope and all the other kind of choices? And yes, we'd love to do that. Um, not in this version. There is an approach to doing this, um, which we could try in a V next. Um, but for the moment, I'm just simply declaring, sorry, um, uh, that's out of scope. And so that's, this means that um, for some targets like NVIDIA, you probably want to first apply you know, a, a global layout and then enter the main um, collage partitioning and then proceed. Um, 
And I should mention that just because collage is doing search doesn't mean all search has to be done by collage. There's many layers of choices to be made. Um, and uh, third limit is, yeah, we're, we're very much in the, the auto-tuning world here. Um, I know there are lots of folks who need kind of a more classical compiler tool chain that doesn't involve waiting a few hours. Absolutely. I think at this point, collage is not going to be for you. Um, theoretically, the cost estimator could be replaced with an analytical model, but I think it's firmly in research territory as to what that analytical model could be. Uh, and then final limitation is we've tried as much as possible to just piggyback directly on BYOC. There, you know, because the interface isn't particularly firm, um, there's a lot of variation into, in how folks have done it, and we've had to make a few adjustments. I'm taking it upon ourselves to make those adjustments as, as we go without breaking backwards compatibility. Uh, that's about all I had. I feel like um, I probably should have paused more for questions. I have one question, actually. Yeah. Um, supposing that we identify, uh, you know, uh, a model that has a set of um, uh, somewhat identical parallel uh, graphs that you could offload. Is there a, a mechanism by which we sort of um, estimate sort of the latency of running those sections in, in parallel um, if they're off Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a, there's another whole kind of sub area here of, um, you know, how flex. When I say partitioning, what do I mean? Do I do I mean that yes, you can explore serial versus parallel? Uh, there's also I I don't even talk about this in the RFC um, notions of inlining. You know, like hey, I see a a a, a, a reshape which is then shared four hundred times or in GPT two like. 38 times or something ridiculous. Should I be exploring, well, do the reshape and then share the result or should I inline the reshape into all of the consumers? So basically none of that we're doing. So at this point, all we're searching over is like, where does the cookie cutter go? And, you know, what color are the cookies? You know, what target does that thing go to? And that that's it. So okay. yeah, more, yeah. more, uh, more V next. Right, and and seems like the if you were to explore something like that, the um, the search process would need to be expanded a little. Like the model would need to be expanded a bit, and then also sort of the way that we compute the end to end latency would need to be expanded. Yeah, I think basically, so long as we stay, I think the lines we need to stay within would be the thing you want to explore can be expressed by a local transform. Um, so, you know, you may want to say, okay, well, here's my partition, but also do some copying in and maybe put a, you know, a power here to, to separate. Um, so long as you can do that and you can estimate the latency by measuring that thing in itself, you know, you don't need to go back and measure the whole thing. So long as you stay within those lines, you're still in this nice, friendly dynamic programming world. And I think that's all, you know, in due course, we could explore that, um, I want to have the empirical stuff, a very firm foundation on empirical stuff, because I think it's too easy to fool ourselves. Um, but when you start getting into worlds where, you know, the choice I make here has a dramatic global change, and I can only measure the effect of that change by measuring the overall model latency, you're, you're well, well outside of dynamic programming world. And um, yeah, I don't think this is the right approach for those sorts of problems. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Um, any other question or anything? I guess you can just unmute yourself and ask or raise your hand or type your question. There are many options. Oh, I haven't looked at chat. No, there are no, there are no questions. Oh, it was, uh, yeah, no worries. Any other question for Mark or comment? We might have an extra 10 minutes for coffee. Yeah, perhaps. Uh, yeah, should I, we uh, allow anyone to um, introduce themselves if they're they're new here and, and want to say hi? That's the only other thing I could think of we we missed from yeah. our our stardom thing. Hello, yes, I'm new. I'm George. Um, 
I recently started working with uh, the compilers team within ARM. Yes, yeah, so happy to, to be here. Awesome. I see some familiar faces as well. Welcome. Anyone else, uh, I guess, uh, you can just unmute and introduce yourself. No, apparently not. So I guess um, we can call it a day. Yeah, thank uh, you, Mark, thank for the very much. Yeah, for the great presentation. Yeah, thanks, everyone. And um, uh, feel free to just send any questions or comments or whatever. I think the RFC is closed, so that's not very convenient. But um, on the original discuss post, uh, if you can find it. Awesome. Yeah, I, I took some notes on the. Um, the conversation today and so not another presentation right. part but just any of the conversation bullet points I'll, I'll post up some brief notes on i guess on the rfc thread or, thanks. or perhaps on the thanks appreciate that it's hard yeah. to take notes and wrap it on at the same yeah time. and and actually it's worth mentioning here just to kind of along the lines of the uh what what uh leandro was asking about kind of at the beginning of the meeting uh one thing that we should get a little bit better at um and and i'll try to to uh, improve this in the next uh couple of weeks is um, we'd really like to have someone to be a host and then someone to be a, a note taker and, and just identify those people uh, early on. And so, um, you know, it's kind of been a bit ad hoc, but uh, uh, especially as we're starting to sort of spread out the load of hosting meetings. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll start asking folks to do that, too. So that's another role that if anyone's interested in, please do um, sign up or, or ping us. Um, so. Great. Yeah, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Go, Mark. I was just going to say, I'm happy to take notes next week, if that would help. I won't host. You've probably heard me talk quite enough. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, and uh, I guess for, for everyone else, uh, reminder that we are looking for topics for, for the agenda to be composed for the next weeks. So if you want to volunteer, you can uh, you can reach out uh, on, on Discord or use the document as well uh that you see on the on the forum um yeah i guess that's it for today thank you mark for the presentation thank you everyone for attending and uh, we meet again next week bye 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 thanks see everyone bye thanks bye